welcome to this episode of Zero to Hero, a beginner's guide to Loki. I'm Jay Clifford and today we're diving into the basics of ingesting logs into Loki. Before we jump in, a bit of housekeeping. If you haven't seen our What is Loki episode, I highly recommend watching it first. It will give you a solid grounding on how Loki works and how to deploy a simple demo. Also, check out our other videos for some background theory around logs. With that out of the way, let's talk about log ingestion. So, how does Loki ingest logs? Logs are pushed into Loki via a HTTP API endpoint, typically using snappy compressed protocol buffer messages, otherwise known as LogProto, but they can also be sent as a JSON payload. These messages are received by distributors which handle incoming HTTP requests. Each stream is then validated to ensure correctness and adherence to configured tenant or global limits. And then the data is then sent to ingesters, which prepare and write the logs into object storage. We'll dive deeper into Loki's architecture in another episode, but it's essential to understand this overall flow of write requests. Next, let's talk about how Loki stores these logs. If you watched our Getting Started with Loki episode, Nicole mentioned that Loki isn't like your traditional log aggregation tool that essentially would pass and index each field within a log entry. Instead, Loki stores logs as streams of log entries. You can imagine this essentially being a highly compressed string. So whether your log data is plain text, JSON, or any other format, Loki stores it the same. Now, Loki does have an index, but it comes in the form of labels. We will chat about labels a little later in the video, but labels are important for distinguishing one log stream from another. At this point, you might be wondering, are we leaving you high and dry writing push requests of your logs into Loki via the HTTP endpoint? The straight answer is no. There are several ways to collect and send logs to Loki, and we're gonna divide them into three categories primary, specialized, and third party. In the primary category, we have Grafana Alloy. This is a vendor neutral distribution of the open telemetry collector. Alloy offers native pipelines for Otel, Prometheus, Pyroscope, Loki, and many other tools for metrics, logs, traces, and profiles. If you're new to Loki, then Alloy is our recommended method for ingesting logs into Loki. And we'll discuss this more in a moment. Next is our specialized category, which includes the Otel collector and Promtail. As of Loki 3.0, you can now push logs directly from the OpenTelemetry collector via a specialized endpoint that uses structured metadata. We'll show you how to configure the Otel collector in our next video. Promtail is an agent that reads logs from sources like files, the system journal, and Kubernetes pods. It uses Prometheus-like service discovery to find targets automatically. Interestingly, Promtail has been integrated into Grafana Alloy, so you can choose between a general purpose collector or an agent specifically designed for logs. Our last category is third party. This includes clients that are compatible with Loki. Each of these third party plugins will receive their own configuration video. So I'm just gonna list them for you here. Okay, let's get to the meat of this lesson, ingesting logs with Alloy. From here on out, we're going to be doing this via an interactive demo. You can follow along with the repository found in the description below, or you can use the online sandbox killer coder. I will be making use of the online sandbox. We're also going to be using the carnivorous greenhouse demo once again, but this time we're going to be working in a branch which has a very empty alloy configuration. We're going to be using this to build out the alloy configuration step by step, so you can see the changes this has on writing data to Loki. Luckily, due to the nature of how Loki stores logs, it offers this flexible insight. The first thing we're going to do is manually spin up our Docker environment. Once our environment is spun up, we can then run the following Docker command to view our running containers, which should look a little like this. 
Now, Alloy comes with a UI interface, which we can access at localhost with the port 12345. At the moment, we aren't seeing anything too interesting since we have a blank config. Our first task is to provision Alloy to tail our application logs. Our application logs can be found in the logs directory. Specifically, we are interested in the app.log file containing our application specific logs. It is worth noting that we have pre-mounted this directory as a volume into the Alloy Docker container so we can scrape these logs. Let's start by adding a component that's going to locate our log file. Local file matches a component within Alloy that discovers files on your local file system using glob patterns and the double star library. So let's break down how we've constructed this component. Essentially, we call the component and then we name it. This name needs to be unique. Then we have some curly brackets and within the curly brackets, we have a set of arguments. The first argument is path underscore target, which takes a list of targets. For the sake of simplicity, we've actually specified our entire path to our app.log file, but you can with star notation be a lot more dynamic. For example, what we could have done is we could have said temp slash star slash app.log. This essentially would have looked for all app.log files within all directories underneath temp. And you could be even more general than this. You could do something like temp slash star slash star dot logs to look for all log files within the temp directory. We have also an optional argument called sync period. This defaults to 10 seconds, but we'll reduce this for the sake of the demo. This is important if you're actively adding many log files to your file system and want to sync alloy to these changes. Now we have a couple of options for reloading our alloy config. You could either do it manually by restarting the Docker container, but there's actually a way more clever way of doing this. What we can do is actually reload our config using the HTTP endpoint and alloy, essentially call slash dash slash reload, and this will actively reload our config. Now let's actually jump ahead and define where we want our logs to go. Loki write receives log entries from other Loki components and sends them over the network using Loki's log proto format. In this configuration, we include the basics as we did before, but with one key difference. We are also including optional nested blocks. The endpoint block describes a single location to send logs to. We could actually create multiple endpoint blocks if we want to provide locations to send our logs to different places. There are other optional nested blocks that we could have also included as well, such as authorization, OAuth, and QConfig. Once we add this component and reload the Alloy config, we can see the new component within the Alloy UI. Now let's actually start scraping those logs. What we're going to do next is use the Loki source file component, which is actually inherited from Promtail. It receives a set of log files and scrapes the contents of those log files into an alloy data pipe, which is fed to a Loki compatible receiver. In this case, we have two arguments. The first is targets which is a list of files to scrape. For this argument, we're actually providing our file match component as input. Next is forward to. This is where we want to export our logs and we would export these to a chosen Loki receiver component. For now, this will be directly to the Loki write receiver. If we reload our alloy config a final time, we can now see all components and how they interlock within the graph panel within our alloy UI. Let's now create some logs using our carnivorous greenhouse application. We will also toggle on error mode to generate some more interesting logs. 
Let's now jump into Grafana and check out the current state of logs we are collecting and storing in Loki. If you use the Log Explorer and filter by our file name, a predefined Loki label, you can see our application logs. So we've mentioned labels a few times, but what exactly are they? Labels are key value pairs and can be defined as pretty much anything. We like to refer to them as the metadata to describe a log stream. If you're familiar with Prometheus, there are a few labels you're used to seeing, like job and instance. In our case, we have two predefined labels by alloy, file name and service name. Labels are important because they improve our retrieval times for specific log streams and also allow us to distinguish one log stream from another. Now, having said this, it does not permit us to label everything. We will cover label best practices in another video. But for now, the rule of thumb is to define meaningful labels which distinguish one set of log streams from another that you should query regularly. These labels should also be finite to stop your index from growing out of control. So stay clear of trace or span IDs, IP addresses and user IDs, as this can impact performance over time. Remember, the secret source of Loki is in parallelization, not indexing. As a final step in our tutorial, why don't we add a processing step to our alloy config, which will pass our log for a specific attribute and turn it into a label. We'll start by adding the component called Loki process. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, this is where things can get quite confusing, so we're going to break it down. The Loki process acts as a Loki receiver, meaning it can take log entries from another component which exports Loki log entries. In this case, this will be the Loki source file. From there, we have quite a few internal blocks we can use to build out our processing pipeline. Now, order is incredibly important here. The order in which you define is the order in which each stage of the pipeline is executed. Our first stage is called stage log FMNT. This essentially allows us to pass each log line that looks like this. Essentially, it's a hybrid between text and structured logging, including both key value pairs and plain text based logs. In our case, we're going to pull out two key value pairs into variables to be used as labels later in the pipeline, level and logger. Next in our pipeline is stage labels. It can read data from the extracted values map and set new labels on incoming log entries. In our case, we define the label keys back to their original names and we provide the extracted attributes as the values. Lastly on the list, we need to do some plumbing as currently the process stage of the pipeline is unconnected. Essentially, we need to change the forward to parameter for the source file to point to the receiver of the Loki process. We also need to check to make sure that our process pipe is pointing to the Loki write component, which it already is. Let's save the changes and reload one final time. If we take a look within the Alloy UI, once again, we can see the completed pipeline. And then we, when we jump back into the Grafana Explorer, we can now see we have two new labels to query by, level and logger. We will cover some more complex alloy configurations and best practices for logs in another video, but I did want to leave you with one more hack. If you're a current Promtel or Grafana agent or even Otel collector user, then Alloy has a neat migration tool which will automatically convert those configs into Alloy configs. To do this, simply install Alloy onto your local machine, then call the CLI command based upon your chosen config. In this case, we'll use the Promtel config. Run the command and this will output a ready to go alloy configuration. And that brings us to the end of our intro to ingesting logs into Loki lesson. Learning alloy to ingest logs into Loki at first might seem daunting, but it is an incredibly flexible and powerful collector, which will soon become 
quite the Swiss army knife in your growing arsenal of observability tools. Stay tuned for our next Loki ingest video, all about open telemetry. Also, keep an eye out for Nicole's next video in the series, which is an introduction to querying with Loki. Until next time, my name is Jay Clifford, stay 